in this video we're going to work with a little bit responsive CSS grid okay and I show you some ways that you can make your uh, CSS grid responsive and um, obviously that's not the only ways that you can do the stuff but that's the ways that are easier and you can implement it and you can start working with uh, with this kind of stuff immediately in your projects okay uh, obviously as well it's going to be a simple examples and um, you can then apply in your real life applications okay uh, and I'm planning to make two examples one of the example is going to be a little bit more linear means that like imagine that you have a 10 equal boxes and you want that they going to be a responsive in all the sizes that you have or when you resize the browser that's going to be one of the example and the other example I'm planning to make a little bit more like uh, application structure and using a CSS grid to organize the structure and everything inside uh, of this structure okay let's go to start with the first example with uh, with the linear way that we planning to move the stuff around the browser so uh, first of all what I have here is that I create one index file and one grid structure file and nothing more. I'm planning just for the purpose of this example to uh, to put the CSS in line in our HTML. Uh, but if you prefer to separate in different uh, style um, style file, CSS file, uh, it's up to you. OK, or if you prefer to use SAS or uh, some CSS preprocessor, you can use it. In this case, we're going to do it very simple. So the CSS is going in line here. OK, and I'm going to use uh, a live server there is an extension for vs code that we can see our code in in localhost okay so let's go to start with the simple example the simple example is going to be that we want one wrapper and this wrapper it's going to have uh let's go to say that we want uh 10 10 items inside okay we want 10 items and uh, we want to this one to be the first one that's the second that's the third that's the four that's the fifth six seven eight nine and then ten okay so the idea here is that uh, these items they going to be equal and they going to be responsive okay let's going to put some simple style before the, we open our project in the browser like I said that's going to be inline style here and first of all our uh, first of all our wrapper we're going to give some basic style we want to make it a max width of thousand and let's go and say thousand two hundred pixels like this we can see perfectly how the responsive part is working we wanted the margin it's going to be uh, auto because we want in the center of our browser okay and obviously that's going to be the grid well the, the CSS grid uh, wrapper which we just give a display grid okay and then let's go to give some styles as well of our items for example we want the our item uh, here something strong going on there okay it's nothing wrong going on we just have to finish the style here so we want our item to be sorry guys uh, we want a border around the item so like this we can see it in the browser what's happening when uh, when we create it when we create the, the items okay so uh, the border we oops sorry one pixel so late on uh, we want like a kind of black okay and we want as well some padding around this stuff okay we want for example 20 pixel of uh padding actually we don't we don't want the padding let's go to make it everything uh everything in the center so for, for this purpose we're going to use a display flex and then we say justify content justify content center and then align item center okay we just want to put everything in the center here we want the border and uh yeah i think that with this we should be okay if we save this and we go and open it in the browser like i said i'm using uh sorry there we go and let's start a server for us and as you can see here we uh, have the items they they are inside in grid 
container okay and we have the items now without any form and any uh, any stuff okay first of all let's go to put some grid uh, gap around the items so uh, the old way is that you say um, grid gap and then you say 20 for example and it's going to apply everything but if you have a look here when we say grid gap um, yeah, the browser is just well the browser the vs code is suggesting that if we use a grid gap that's um the obsolete now for some of the browsers uh, the specific of the get between grid column and grid rows on declare a play by gap properly okay so what we can do is that we can say uh column gap and that's going to be uh let's go say 20 well 10 pixels should be fine and then as well we can say a uh, row gap the row row gap and 10 pixel as well should be uh, plenty okay let's go and see what's happening here yeah we have a little bit space be around the, the items okay so now what we want is that we want to make uh, the items to be equal and to be responsive okay we want the typical situation that we have like four columns and then when we go smaller we have like three columns and so far and so on okay so what we can do here is that we can say a grid template column okay and for example if we say one fr for fraction and then one fr and then one fr probably by now you know what's going to happening that's going to divide and three kind of uh, columns okay but they not they not responsive because if we open it here uh, we start to make it small as you can see that they not responsive so they always going to be three of these okay and because we don't want to use so many query so what we can do here is that uh, you have a way to say uh, repeat okay and when you say repeat the first one is need to know how many times you want to repeat okay and then um and then for example what's the size of the item that you want inside for example you can say one fraction let's go and say that we want four times and we want one fraction okay if we put like this uh that's again it's not going to be uh responsive it's going to be more easy because we just say four times one fraction okay and what's exactly we get now we get four times one fraction okay but if we want to be and uh, if we want to make it responsive so here's coming the uh here's coming the magic okay so the first one is going to be uh, out of field so the out of field is going to obviously get uh the auto uh how many times it's going to be that's depend of the size of our element okay but the size because we don't know the, the size and we cannot put one fraction so what we want is the man max mean well <laughs> we want a mean max so mean max means that we want like for example if we put mean max and that's going to be a 300 pixels means that well we want that the size is going to be a 300 pixels and that's going to be a one fraction so uh, that's going to uh, sorry that's going to make a calculation for us and uh, it's going to get immediately responsive uh, responsive grid with items that they like a minimum 300 uh, pixels okay so when we go in the browser you can see now here for example that's a 300 and that's a 300 and when that's going more smaller that we don't have enough space it's going in one column okay and uh, the other way the opposite way it's uh, it's happening oops sorry it's happening same when we go bigger and bigger this it's going on different kind of uh, columns and as you can see that's quite useful because how many how many lines of code we spend we just don't spend uh, so much because this one is like a general style so we spend like one two three four lines of code and we get a responsive grid here okay now let's go on to make it a little bit more fun let's go on to make it with a structure okay so a basic structure that we can get in most of the application let's go on to simulate one one of those structure is that we have a header in the top footer in the bottom and then inside we have some uh, content in my case i'm planning to show you like this we have the, the header in the top footer in the bottom and the grid container is going to stay in the middle between these kind of two elements okay and inside is going to have uh, 
another another properties okay another prop well, one other properties is going to be uh, is going to have a children's elements okay like for example let's go to say that we talk about article okay we talk about blog post then we want to create we want to design uh, the the content of the blog post page okay so what we can do is the uh, we need the sidebar but we want to display some more posts that we have then we have the content area the, obviously where is going to be our post then for example we can have a navigation area as well inside in this uh, element as well we can have uh, ads well uh, area that we can put the ads and you know all these stuff that we don't like it but anyway we have to put in the web because you know our websites have to eat as well and we have to eat and we have to get some money from this okay uh so let's go to start actually i'm stopped sp speaking so much and we start uh with the simple example and you see what i mean by that first of all the simple is we create the footer and the header uh, the header and the footer with the class of with the class of header okay that's going to be our header and then the footer guess what with the class of footer okay now we have the header of the and the footer in the middle we put our wrapper okay so in the middle we put the just give me a second guys there we go so in the middle we say wrapper okay and that's going to be our uh, grid element inside like i said that's going to be uh, our blog post okay so inside we want the navigation in the top we say nav with uh well the class is going to uh, be nav we're not very creative today and uh, we try to be semantic as well so means that if we want a sidebar that's going to be a site a site okay with a class of class of sidebar and then in our nav we can put nav so like this we can recognize it and in the sidebar we can put sidebar okay so then after the sidebar we start left to right okay after the sidebar we're going to have the article and the content inside article with the class of uh i don't know let's go to say the uh, content okay we have a content here for the content let's go to put a little bit content here with the p and because we use a visual studio code which have uh, the option to read uh, lorem and then give a hundred for example and that's going to create for us a little bit boilerplate that we have something to show in in the browser and for the last we're going to put our ads ads okay that's going to be a diff with the class of ads okay ads there we go so we have a very very basic structure here what we can do as well is the like in the previous uh, example we start to style everything um, we can put a black line around the element so we can see it in the browser better okay let's go with this uh, we use inline style as well here and let's go to uh, specificate the header header oops sorry which actually not just the header uh, as well they both going to be with the width of 100 okay uh, 100 percent okay they're going to get the full width of the the browser window okay and then uh, let's go to style a little bit let's say here because uh, we're going to use some some padding so if we're going to use some padding we want the border box to be uh or the border size to be a border box okay uh, like this we want that the padding is getting uh, action inside in the element and not outside of the element okay um let's say the uh, we create like before uh, item item class which is going to have a uh, i don't know padding of 20 and the border border of uh, again one pixel oops sorry pixel solid and the color is going to be 333 okay that should be fine for us let's go to say that uh, we want 
the item of the border actually and the padding we want in the header just to see the header what's happening we don't want in the wrapper we want in the nav and we want in the sidebar and we want in our container obviously then we want in our ads and the footer could be as well with some border okay uh, let's say the let's say that let's go to have a look this one in the browser to see what's happening these are grid grid structure no sorry that's here it's my mistake okay so what we have here let's go and see yeah we forget to put a uh, header okay and then to put as well footer just to see it in the browser okay footer now we have it we have imagine that obviously we start to work mobile first okay so we have the header here which is going to be always fixed here then we have the footer in the bottom we have the nav of our article then we have the sidebar and then we have the ads okay uh in some typical use case when we start to get bigger we don't want this structure and we want our structure to moving and be more responsible and be depending on the size of the window okay so exactly this is which exactly this we're going to <clears throat> implement with the css grid okay so let's go let's go here and let's say that first of all in our wrapper first of all our wrapper it's going to have uh obviously display uh, display grid then let's going to give the width again it's going to be a max width of this case yep, let's go to say thousand uh, thousand pixels okay uh, display grid and then uh, and then yeah yes that's it now first of all let's going to create a simple structure and the syntax which is going to help us in the uh, structuring the future uh, elements and you see what I mean by that if you say for example grid template areas okay here we have uh, we can be very specific eh? and we can say for example that we want to naming uh, the area of our elements how we name the area of our elements imagine that the first uh, element that we want in our grid area it's going to be uh, nav okay and our nav is going to have the grid area name nav okay so we can use it here nav okay then a second element and that's the syntax that we have to use it you see why we have to use it once when we start to make all this stuff uh, responsive so the second element that we have here it's going to be a sidebar then the third element it's going to be uh, what was it the content then the four element i think that you get the idea it's going to be a what was it ads ads in our case and yeah that's it now it's nothing going to change it's going to be the same like if we are in the mobile it's going to be responsive like this but let's go on to say that we want like here in 600 uh, we want something to change well something let's go on to say that we want in 600 to put the sidebar in the side of the content and content moving a little bit in the right and leave the other stuff just here so let's go on to make this one uh, what we have to do is the first of all we have to put the name of all uh, all the grid areas that we want to specificate so we say that the sidebar it's having a grid area of sidebar okay and then we say that the content it's having a grid area of content sorry and then we say that the ads so that's a class ads having a grid area of ads okay so now uh, because we say that we want uh, when it's a bigger than 600 the happening that the sidebar is coming in one of the part here and then the content is coming in the other side here uh, what we do is the we can use a media query so we can say oops media and we specificate the 
mean uh, the mean width we want to be uh, sorry the mean width we want to give uh, 600 here pixels and then inside we going to make everything happening it's going to copy just to use because uh, we're going to change uh, we're going to change properties in our wrapper it's going to structure it we obviously don't need to specificate again the display grid and the width because we already did it in the main content here but what we want to do here and bear with me stay with me and you see what's the magic here is that we say uh, the grid template column it's going to be one fraction for our sidebar and then it's going to be two fraction of our uh, of our content okay so it means that we get uh, one fraction for the now when we do this you see what I mean by that but if we if we say that our grid system now have one column and two columns we want that the nav is occupied one of the column and then the two of the columns nav okay here then the sidebar we want to be one fraction and then the content we want to be the two fractions here okay so obviously we don't need the content and we leave the ads one of the fraction and ads another two of the fractions when we save it and we go here and you see what's happening okay means that if we in the mobile we get everything in the line then when we go here uh, you get the sidebar one of the fraction then the content it's two of the fraction or we can do as well a little bit more bigger because you see that it's not so uh, nice looking so we can see three here and if you say that's going to get more space and that's going to get less space but let's say that we want to continue let's say that here for example in I don't know 960 we want sidebar here content here ads here well let's going to do uh, let's going to duplicate all this and here we say a 900 okay because we want when we get when we reach 900 to change okay well 900 whatever you like you can put here okay depend of the the, the devices that you're going to support okay and here we say uh, we want a two fraction well let's go yeah well, let's go to show with two fractions here and one fraction for um uh, for our ads okay so what happening here now it's going to be one to one if you follow the idea the content is go well it's going to be a sidebar content and ads means that the sidebar is getting one the content is getting two and the ads is getting the other one and then ads we don't need it here down there so we can just delete it and see what's happening here okay again if you want more space for the content because it doesn't look very nice here what we can do is that we can say i don't know let's go to try with four for example and yeah let's look fine now okay so if we get bigger it's going to stay like this if we go smaller it's going to be like that and if we go mobile it's going to be mobile okay so guys i hope so that you see how powerful is the css grid and i hope so that you understand how many uh, difficulties is removing from from the past okay that we we cannot do this kind of stuff with just a few lines of code because it's just few lines of code okay it's not so much code to make this kind of uh responsive system and we make it with quite few lines of code and i hope so that's going to be helpful for you as well so thank you to watching guys and we see you in the next video Bye.